Tell me who is flying that drone if the controller is on the floor there. I tell you, an autopilot. Hi guys, it's Oli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video I'm going to show how I attempted to make an autopilot for my Mini 2. This method should also work for the Air 2 and many other RC control devices because the, the concept is the same. So here is the remote taken apart and you see this is the joystick module. It has five pins, ground, supply voltage and then there is this AD0 and AD1 line. These are very important for us. The C1 is just the button for the, the function button you can see on the picture. So as the joystick is being moved, that potentiometer is turned inside and the AD1 value is changing. It's like connecting the supply voltage to the end and it creates a voltage gradient. Like if you would heat a metal rod only on one end and then tapping into this rod on different positions, you get different temperature. It's just the same, you just get different voltages with the potentiometer. And this is what is being communicated through the AD0 or AD1 line to the remote. This is how it knows what's the joystick's position. But is it possible to replace this whole thing with a circuit? You bet it is. And this is where the DAC, the digital to analog converter, comes in play. It is actually a circuit which, if fed information from a microcontroller maybe, which is running a program, it gives out a certain voltage. And that voltage can be fed into the AD0 or AD1 line. You see, as the data from the microcontroller changes, the voltage changes. And this is a very precise device. So it can mimic the movement of a joystick, thus making the remote believe that there is an actual human operating the remote. I think that is the definition of an autopilot. For that I have to tap into this line coming from the joystick to this plug, to this connector which goes to the motherboard of the remote. Because in the original setting the line from the joystick goes straight to the motherboard. What I want to do is to get this line out from the remote so I have chance to tap into it and have another line connected to the connector which goes to the motherboard. So I have basically a chance to manipulate the signal as, as always. This is what many of the hacks are actually to tap into an original signal, change it and send it to the receiver. So as you see I'm actually connecting four wires on each side to each joystick module two lines coming out with the joystick position and two lines will go in to the connector via the connector to the motherboard. That's actually the simplicity of it and that's, uh, that's how we can tap into the whole thing. This is how it looks, you see. Basically I just removed the black wires and driven them out of the remote so I can manipulate them. And of course I tap into the, the ground and the supply voltage line for reference later. So starting to put together the remote, I mean nothing, I will not uh, really fully reassemble it because the cables have to be managed, it's just a prototype now, it's a test, but the remote works and then of course it uh, gives a fault because so, so to say the joysticks are not connected. I'm checking the supply voltage here and yes, as I expected, it's 3.3 volts. That's great because my microcontroller can handle that perfectly. And now here I'm checking a, a joystick position. You saw middle position was 1.6 volt. Interesting, when I pull down, it goes up. But this is how the voltage is changing and that's how it, it sees the position. These are the DACs, the digital to analog converters I'm going to use. They are from Microchip. And uh, I didn't want to bore you with uh, me soldering this up. This is just a prototype. The two DACs are actually being used the same way. So I just uh, put them in a socket basically and, and made it so that I can connect it to the microcontroller. All the schematics are going to come soon, so don't worry. Uh, this is just, I didn't want you to see all the soldering. Of course, I'm planning to make a PCB on this one because this is a bigger project and uh, I think it's a cool one. 
So this is how it is, and I connected it up to my microcontroller. I'm using an STM32 clone microcontroller. It will be also in the schematic, the exact type. I chose this because of there are certain characteristics which I like better on this one than on an Arduino. But uh, I do believe an Arduino would be just fine as well. So while I'm soldering everything up here, I'm going to explain how it works. So you see all the cables from the remote. And there is the microcontroller, it's an STM32F103CHTC86 clone, and there are the DACs. So, of course, all the grounds have to be common, it's uh, all connected together. And uh, the supply voltage of the, of the microcontroller and the DAC should be 5 volts, maybe 4 is enough. I'm testing if it's possible to connect the battery from the remote, but for now, being I use an external power source, um it's a bet for better accuracy and you see the 100 nanofarad capacitor on the DACs it's per the data sheet is needed to smooth the the supply voltage now on the right you see all the pins from the remote which one is which maybe the naming is not uh, perfect but i think you get the point now you see basically from a0 to a3 on the microcontroller those pins basically the orange the brown the blue and the gray are the lines where the microcontroller senses the position of the joysticks and the yellow red green and purple lines from the DACs on the left up those are the lines where the where the remote control motherboard is getting the signal from this whole circuit i made additionally so and then this is the way how I connected up the microcontroller and the DACs. The green and the yellow lines are the SPI, data communication uh, protocol lines. This is where the, the decks are getting the info which uh, voltage to give out. And the purple and the gray are just the chip select so that they understand which chip the microcontroller is talking to at that point is uh, maybe it looks a little bit complicated but there will be really i will try to design a pcb for this so it's more easy to understand so there is an operation of this when the microcontroller does nothing else just senses the voltage and sends the same voltage through the dac so in that mode what i do on the joysticks the drone will exactly do in that case, this whole circuit I made is just a very complicated wire, actually. But the other mode is when it's programmed, and this is how it looks in operation. So with the reset button, I start the program of this microcontroller, and you see the joysticks, I'm not touching the controller. It started the rotors, took off, now it's turning right, left, back to middle, goes front, back, goes to the left, the right to the left. So basically all four joystick movements are tested and they are working fine. Now ask me why there is the cage, the probe cards on the, on the drone. I mean the amount of failures I had on this during the testing and development period is crazy. If I wouldn't have the probe guards I'm like whatever. But you see now the automatic program is over, so now it's switched to be a very fancy, very complicated wire. And then I have full control over the drone. The blinking red LED on the remote, don't bother with it, it's just actually that the drone was a little bit low on battery here, so that's just a low battery warning. And this is how it works, it just fully functions. Of course it's very crude, it's the first part of this series, but what can this be used for? Custom quick shots, you can program any move to this and it will just execute it. Uh, there could be an ultra smooth cinematic mode where it's even smoother than the cinematic mode, it, which includes also gradual acceleration, deceleration. Waypoints can be given to this drone. Of course, the GPS data need to be tapped into or an additional GPS had to be put on. Obstacle and collision avoidance. Sensors need to be put on, but it is possible. I already have a plan how to do it all different kind of automated flights and much much more guys this is is really exciting the the, the possibilities are 
practically endless. So I invite you to come with me on this journey to explore these new possibilities. I already have a lot of ideas and uh, ways how to implement it. I think it's quite exciting to be honest. Let me know what you think. And uh, of course, if you have any questions or any other thoughts, please leave it in the comment section. Check out my other videos if you are interested in this subject and please don't forget to subscribe. It uh, really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.